One of the things that we've always talked about doing in the RV uh, is replacing this TV. Guess what today is? Today we are installing a hardwired surge protector. All right, more maintenance today. Today we are uh, doing the bearings. So one of the things that we've always talked about doing in the RV uh, is replacing this TV. The reason being is because if you push it, you can't push it all the way in. And if you do, it's actually like in the hallway some, but if you pull it where it's out of the hallway, then it sits in front of the pantry. So we just feel like it's a 50 inch TV, contrary, like this may trigger some. We think we need a smaller TV. I know, I said it, I'm sorry. So what I did today is I went and bought a new new TV. Uh, we're gonna go with a 43 inch. It measurements, it should fit much better in this lovely, lovely area here. And so now I'm going to just take this off. I got a mess back here, all these wires. Now I'm gonna take this off and then get the TV, bring it in. I might have to move the mount. I don't know yet, but uh, I might move it up because I got a sound bar to go with it. Something very interesting. Uh, they had these brackets on the back along with the panel. Instead of using the holes, they used self tapping screws to go through this plate into the TV itself. Right there, in there, there, in there. Instead of, you know, the four holes that come on the back of the TV. Interesting method. This is the back of it. This is their newest one. It has the four it's four K, but it's also one twenty refresh rate. So gaming and stuff on it. it looks really good. I wanted to show you, look how good that TV came out. The 43 inch fits way better in that area than the 50 inch did. <laughs> it just, now it's not sitting in my hallway, it's not sitting in front of the pantry, it can actually fit in the hole that it was, like, was designed for the TV. And I picked up this nice Sony soundbar. Yep. Uh, sorry, Wubby. Uh, it was a great deal. But anyways, uh, yeah, that looks so much better, so much easier to maneuver. And because it's a smaller TV, we can actually angle it a little bit more now, so it's easier to watch TV on the couch. So, cool. Win-win, right? Guess what today is? Today, we are installing a hardwired surge protector. I've never done this before, so we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna start tearing everything out of the bay now, and we're going to start installing, we got a watchdog, uh, hardwired uh, surge protector, funny story. I actually ordered the one that goes on the pedestal. They sent me the hardwired one. I was reading reviews, they get, <laughs> they get switched up on Amazon a lot for some reason. I was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get the hardwired one. And then I always have a backup if I need it. Uh, so we're going to do that today. That it gives me the ability to kind of see what the, the power that's actually coming in from the pedestal. With the Battleborn system, you can see what's going through the inverters, uh, how much is coming in and how much is going out. But it doesn't tell me if the line or the, the power coming from the pedestal itself is actually uh, at full strength. So we're going to add that, just another layer of protection to that system that we have. And then I think we're going to do some more maintenance this week.
So what I'm doing right now is I, I actually have to take the uh, Morai tray out of the bay before I can even get to the walls. And then I have to take all of the walls out. And I can't tell you how many times I've taken the walls out of this bay. But uh, once I get all these walls out, then I have access to all of the wiring that I will need since the 50 amp comes in from the pedestal right there beside my hot water tank. And then I'm able to splice into that. At least that's the plan to start with. All right, so all I've done at this point is basically just pull the uh, the automatic transfer switch out of its little hole back there behind the Nautilus system because every time you touch one of those stupid plex pipes, they start leaking. Now I got to fix a few of those. <laughs> Thankfully, I have the tool for that. But um, all right, I pulled it out. All power is cut to the rig. I turned the batteries off. I turned the breakers off. I unplugged it from the uh, wall. I turned the inverters off. I flipped all the breakers, anything I could possibly think of that could carry power, I flipped it off. So <laughs> just so that, you know, I don't want to take a chance. I don't personally, I don't like working with electricity, uh, but it's kind of a necessary thing uh, if you don't want to hire somebody to do it. I, I have an idea of, of how it all works and I know, but I am not a professional. Please don't take this as a how to. I'm just showing you what I'm doing in my rig. Hopefully I don't royally screw it up. At this point, all I've done is taken the lid off I uh, cut the power and loosened all the wires up so that I could pull the one that's coming from the pedestal where it actually plugs into the RV on the other side, which is way back in a hole. So that's why I chose to just take it off uh, from inside the transfer switch. Okay, I decided I'm going to mount the watchdog up, up to the ceiling and so I got the cables or this cable cut and let me tell you this is some thick non-flexible cable that they use um, in the RV itself so now all I'm doing is just stripping the wire so that I can wire them into the watchdog and uh, being very careful not to fray any of the uh, cables that are running through it it's a little bit easier since they're so thick anyways. But yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wire it up and then the other piece that I cut will come out the back side and down into the transfer switch. That is what I'm up to at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring this in now that I got all the wire stripped. It goes ground, red, white, black. So pretty simple, it's labeled right there on there. So we'll start with the ground. Ground, red, white, black. Start by getting these things in the order they need to go in. I shall not be defeated. There we go. She is wired in. And it will still be behind the wall, but not hard to access if I need it. Okay, at this point I've 
uh, finished wiring up the surge protector and now I'm wiring it back into the automatic transfer switch, which basically you know, lets the camper know whether or not I am receiving power from the pedestal or from the generator. So that will switch back and forth depending on where it's receiving power from. All right, so I got everything wired in. Pedestal here, from here out, back down into the transfer switch. So it's time to test it. It's always the fun part. We have success. Yes, plugged it in, everything's working good. And now it's just time to put the cover back on the transfer switch, put the transfer switch back in its place, and then start putting this place back together. Um, there is a QR code on the front of the watchdog that when you download the app, you scan it into your phone, and then that's what connects the two. It's super simple instructions uh, come with it. I mean, it was time consuming. That's, and uh, it was fairly easy, pretty straightforward. It's just very time consuming because this wire is not easy to work with. All right, let's recap. There is a line right there that came in and went straight to the transfer switch. What I did was split that line and run it up into the watchdog, out supporting the line, and then down back into the transfer switch. That's it. So it's in the line from the pedestal. We're gonna put it all back together now and then move on with our lives. <laughs> more maintenance today today we are uh, doing the bearings it's actually not hard but it is extremely messy extremely messy uh, you're gonna need the red grease and a grease gun of some sort and it's actually pretty easy on these so I'm gonna show you real quick I'll show you how to do one how I do one it's not a how-to video there's obviously six wheels but watch me do it six times it's just gonna get boring so I'll show you how we do it uh, since I've already done a couple to make sure I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and then uh, we will get started on some more maintenance. Okay, so let me show you exactly what I'm talking about when I say lube the bearings. The Grand Design Momentums, they come with Dexter Easy Lube axles. And what that means is there's a little valve right here in the middle of the tire that you can actually hook a grease gun to and use that to lube the bearings. Instead of having to take the bearings out, repack them, and then put them and then reinstall them much faster however reading a lot of forums there is some like back and forth of whether or not you should actually remove the bearings and repack them versus just using the easy lube um, the easy lube fitting personally in the maintenance book it says to do this i'm not going to debate whether or not it's the right thing to do but what i will tell you is there is also some cases where People have used pneumatic uh, grease guns, and what that does is it puts too much pressure on the grease in there, and you can actually blow like the gasket on the backside, and that will allow grease to escape uh, into the brake hubs, which obviously you don't want. So if you're gonna do this, be very careful, make sure you do some research, but let me show you exactly what I'm talking about when I say uh, grease the bearings. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to pop this little cap right off just like that and you see there is like a rubber fitting right here and what that's doing that's protecting the uh, the little uh, connector that the grease gun goes on to so the next thing you want to do is just take a flathead and remove that and it may have some grease on it it may not but like this one has a little bit of grease on it all right now uh, the fitting is exposed what we're going to do is we're going to take the grease gun and clip it onto that. You may not actually feel it connect, but it's on there. If you try to pull it back off, it won't actually come off. However, if you put a little pressure and you pull it off, it will come back. Don't get, you know, don't be too worried. 
you just press it on and it like it's stuck to it. And I'm just gonna start pumping and he rotates the tire. And you do that until the entire tube, new tube is in there. As you're pumping grease into that little nozzle right there, the grease is gonna go in and it pushes all of the old grease out. So what you're gonna see is all of this right here is gonna start to fill up with the old grease and start oozing out, which is why I said this thing, it is so messy. It fills up in this center cap, it fills up in this little hub. It took me forever with rubber gloves to get it all out. Also, word of advice, be careful. If you put your finger in here, don't rub it against this little metal edge right here because it's sharp. It cut my glove a couple times. But that is really it. And once you're done with that, uh, you're going to clean all that grease out. You're going to replace that little rubber um, cover and then you're going to pop your cap back on. But make sure it's good and, good and clean before you do that. That's it. That's really all there is to it. It is time consuming because obviously you got to do this six times. And it takes one can of grease for every wheel. Uh, so you're going to order six. Well, from in my case, I'm going to order six tubes of grease. And it takes the full tube. And just go ahead and push all of that new grease in there and get all that old stuff out of there. It's recommended to do this once every year or at least once every 12,000 miles, depending on what that means for you. Being full time, 12,000 miles, we de we're definitely doing that every year. So uh, it is recommended to do it at least once a year, preferably like when you get it out of, like if you're dewinterizing or something like that, just go ahead and uh, regrease the bearings and keep everything nice and looped up in the wheels so that you can enjoy your RVs on the road. All right, well, I think that about does it for today's video. Let's see, we got a new TV, a new sound bar we uh, a new surge protector and all six wheels are looped. I think we've done quite a bit of RV upgrades and maintenance uh, for this go around. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, make sure you subscribe. Until the next strange adventure, keep making your own. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video and a special thank you to our Patreons listed right over here. Yes, without you guys, we could not do this. Um, if you have not considered joining yet, please do. Link's down below. And our next video is recommended right below this one, so go check that out.